tell us who you are and, and where you're from, a bit more about you. Uh, my name is Tom Corker and uh, I was born in Bensham in the 60s and uh, I've lived in and around Newcastle all my life. Describe your identity. My identity is that I am, uh, my identity isn't, isn't complicated, it's very, very simple, but it's made up of a lot of things. Going way back, I am, I am a great ape, you know, like the gorillas and the orangutans, I'm, a, I'm a conscious of that. I don't think that humans are some separate entity. I think that all of ecology is linked. So I see myself as that. Uh, I see myself as a black man. I'm Afro-Irish. My mother was from Ireland and my dad was from Sierra Leone. So I'm Afro-Irish and I live, in, I live in England and I'm a Geordie, so I'm, I'm a lot of things, you know. But my allegiance is really to, to nature and the planet. What, what makes you proud to be black? Oh, all sorts of stuff makes me proud to be black, you know. The, the, the great heroes that inspired me when I was a child, people like Dr King, Muhammad Ali, Aretha Franklin, Clara Ward, you know, a lot of musical uh, people really inspire me because I spend a great deal of my time involved in music because that's, that's how I make my living and how I, how I, what I enjoy. So I have a lot of, uh, I, I'm one of those black people who knows quite a bit about black history and I know who people are and I know what they've done and I know who recorded what and I know what they went through to do that. So I take great inspiration from the struggle of others and I'm very conscious of the fact that I stand on the shoulders of the people who've gone before me and I have a responsibility to them to conduct myself in a way that they whereby they wouldn't think I was an idiot or that I'd given up on the struggle, you know, because I will never do that, you know. I always want to make sure that I'm trying to, everything I do, I want to try and bring people together because I, I, I'm, I'm part of a lineage that stretches right back to, you know, way into the past, you know, of people, black people trying to make their way in what is effectively a white patriarchal society and trying to change it so it's better for minorities, it's better for women, it's better for gay people, it's better for black people. You also mentioned you, you, you were born in, in Bencham, grew up in Newcastle. What makes you proud to be a Geordie? Uh, well, I've lived in Newcastle my whole life, and, and born in Bencham, lived in my whole life, and I've had the option to move away. I nearly moved to America at one point. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in Amsterdam uh, as a child, going over backwards and forwards. But I've always loved Newcastle. I just like it. I like the size of it. I like the fact that everybody knows everybody if if i don't know you then i know someone who knows you you know it, it's like that and you know the coast is you know half an hour bike ride away the countryside is half an hour bike ride away the beaches are beautiful and there is a warmth here that i think comes from the fact that newcastle is a bit isolated it's not like manchester and leeds that all sort of merge into each other and you know in newcastle you know you, you, you're sort of cut off a little bit from the south and from what people call the north people in manchester call the north we really are the north what does uh, black history month mean to you uh, black history month to me is something which i'm pleased happens but black history month is black history lifetime for me really you know i'm in it all the time you know um, that's what i'm interested in you know i think it can be very it can be tokenistic and I don't, I mean, it is a good thing and I do support it, but I think that it's important that people in this country realise that black history is something which was never taught in schools. The, the, the role of black people in society, the inventions we've made, the, our contribution to society, Western society is greatly undervalued and erased from history. And Black History Month is a sort of a, you know, here's your Black History Month. You're all right, you know. you got your Black History Month. What are you complaining about, you know? Well, I'm complaining about the fact that it's white history 12 months, you know. I'd like to see it be a bit more universal human history rather than the way it was taught to me at school. What happened in America um, with George Floyd and uh, the, the horrible thing that happened. How do, you, how do you think things have changed since then, um, since BLM? Better or worse for, for, the, for the BAME? for the BAME community? Uh, I think that people have become more aware the George Floyd, and what the George Floyd thing did was it made white people realise for once what was what they actually saw up close and could see a man being effectively lynched in front of their very eyes. And they realised they weren't okay with that because they could see it up close. Uh, so I think it heightened awareness and it made a lot of white people feel like they, they weren't cool with that. They, they felt more, they saw the humanity of it. So I think it had a, although it was a terrible act, I think it had a positive effect in uh, waking up a lot of people. And certainly a lot of young people became, I know, became a lot more politicized and a lot more on side uh, with, with, with the situation of black people. 
But I think as well, it's one of those things whereby, you know, social media, you also you get all the people who think, oh, well, this is our chance to run it down, you know, George Furu and run it down. So it's, it's, it, it's a double balance. It's a, 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 it's a balance, you know. I think it, it, it raised awareness, but it also brought the trolls out, you know. It was a very stressful time. You know, being on like social media and that around the time of George Floyd, you had all these idiots chipping in with their all lives matter waffle and that, you know, and totally, totally just trying to devalue the point and keep you down. And that old school thing of, yeah, 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 just take, take this Negro, go away. You know, that, that, that sort of attitude was very, very prevalent on social media. But like I say, on the, on the other side of the coin, it politicised and awoke a lot of people who just said, hey, this isn't OK, you know. And for that, we, I, I'm thankful. You mentioned about growing up in, in, in Newcastle. Tell us more about that. What, what was it like for you growing up in Newcastle? Uh, growing up in, in, in well, it was Gateshead. I grew up in Gateshead. I went to, to Comprehensive in Gateshead. Then I moved to, left home at 16 with two pence and moved to Newcastle. So uh, I've always been around the area. And it was very, very tough when I was a kid. You know, uh, the, only, the only sort of black people in my school was, was me and my brothers. And then my brothers went away to boarding schools. So I was on my own. And I think there was one Asian girl as well. But, uh, but you know, so you got a, a lot of racial abuse all the time. And you sort of, you kind of learn to live with it and deal with it, but you, it, it really had a negative effect on you. And if it wasn't for the likes of Muhammad Ali giving me role models to look up to and, you know, f feel something, it was it very, I was very influenced by America. But people like Malcolm X, you know, influenced me greatly, just seeing black people stand up and speak for themselves. And I thought, yeah, that, that's where I'm going to be at, you know? And that sort of moved me more in that direction. So it was very, 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 very hard racially growing up. And then once I grew up and I took over the Trent house, it was very hard racially again because everybody put me windows out and, you know, called me, called me racial slurs. And as a black man, any black man, you, you, come into touch with, you come in touch with it, it touches on you every now and again. You're like, oh, not that again. Jesus, no matter how, how hard you work to try and make things better, there are some big things that really need to change, you know, and, and they will affect you. Yeah. And Black History Month ain't going to change that. You know, we need some political upheaval in this country, I think. That's what I think. You know, we need to change, a change of outlook from the top down, you know. Very strong. Um, um, are there any incidents that you can, you know, vividly remember and what, what effect that had on you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can remember, uh, I mean, it's, it's not in Newcastle, but I remember an incident when I was running a club up in Edinburgh where I was very nearly killed by a mob of uh, fo football casuals. In, in the 80s, 89, when I was on the club up there and they tried to pull, drag me out of the club and sort of beat me to death type of thing. And I was able to escape only because uh, there was that sort of double leaf doors and the people who were with me were able to sh try and push the door shut, this big mob outside and smash all the guy's fingers with <laughs> pickaxe handles. Otherwise I would have been killed or severely disabled now, you know? So that was, that was a, 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 a rather awakening racial moment. You know, people all shouting, you know, the N word and kill them, kill them, kill them and all that sort of stuff. And when you when you get the door shut, you're like, hang on a minute, I'm trying to run a nightclub here and play black music. And because of that, this mob of white people want to kill me. It's really, really affected, affected me greatly. And it was one of the things that inspired me to get my own nightclub world headquarters. Because I thought, well, if I'm going to stay in this game, I have to get the point where I run everything. I run the security and everything because just coming and playing clubs isn't enough, you know. You know, and you just didn't, you didn't feel like you were part of the society, which is why I got my own club and sort of effectively built my own little society, you know, with World Headquarters. And now, because we've kept that going, we now kind of affect positively generations of young people to have a more diverse, inclusive point of view, which didn't exist when, when I, back, back when I set out to do it, you know. So over the 30 years of World Headquarters, I've gone from, you know, nearly being lynched to, you know, sitting on the board of the university, you know, so things, yeah. have, things have changed, you know, yeah. things have really changed, you know, and it's uh, been a long, a long journey for me. And it, although I, although I have progressed to the point whereby now I'm fairly secure in myself and secure in my, my identity, I, I still feel and I still appreciate there are people who today are getting, you know, dog feces put through the letterbox in areas of the city and people being racially abused and I'm still with them. You know, just because it, it isn't happening to me right now doesn't mean I forget that it happens to other people. Yeah. And it's important that I remain part of the struggle to make this city a fairer and more inclusive and diverse place. And I will always do that. Obviously, there, there was some very scary times about growing up and facing racism. I, I want to try and get to the other side. What, what was the best thing about growing up? 
Best thing about growing up was Northern Soul music, no doubt about it. In the room next door, I've got my Northern Soul collection, which is my pride and joy. And uh, my love of the three minute soul record, sort of black soul music, was the thing that really kept me going as a kid, you know, the Northern Soul scene and collecting records and being into that. And that was the, the most positive black influence, or one of the most positive black influences I've ever had in my life. How is uh, how's Newcastle now compared to when you were growing up? It would you say it's more tolerant? Is it is it more inclusive, less racist? Uh, yes, it wouldn't really be hard for it to be less racist than when I was growing up. <laughs> to be honest, that wouldn't be very difficult. So it, the things have improved. Things are still have a very long way to go, and we have taken significant steps backwards. But it's not so much because of Newcastle. It's because of the rise of Donald Trump, the rise of fake news, the rise of Boris Johnson. Uh, the, the whole Brexit thing, that whole Little England mentality, which makes the Tories loads of dough, but doesn't help actually help the British people at all. But they haven't quite worked that out yet. So that we take a few steps back, but we are a more tolerant city than we were. I think that there have been pillars of Newcastle, for example, that the influence of the trade union movement in the city uh, that has always been strongly anti-racist. And anything I've been doing when I've needed support from a trade union, like when put on the Unity Festival, they've been right there. You know, they stand right beside us. So those sort of influences in the city and the fact that it's a working class city and most working class people, whatever colour whatever color you are, you know, if you're working class, you're working class, you know, and, and you're people who work and it's the divisiveness has been dropped in from the people on high who want to control us. Really, the, the average person in Newcastle is pretty accepting, you know. So we've still got a way to go, but things are a lot better than they were when I was a kid. A hell of a lot better. You know, if you, if you look now at... Uh, if, if when I went to school, I, I was the only black kid in school, and my daughter, my girlfriend has a mixed race daughter, and she goes to a local school, and it's packed full of kids, but kids of every every you know every, every racial racial combination you could want at that school. I know I know there'll be people watching this um, who will be facing racism, be facing prejudice, and all sorts of bias, and you know don't know how to deal with it. What what would your what would your message be to to people who are going through this? My message would be stand firm, you know, whatever you're going through, believe me, there's people who've been through worse than what you're going through now. And that's not to undermine the experiences you're having, but you will get through this. You know, there are people you can depend on. You know, if, if you're having a really, and you want a friend, you know, go on the Willow Cutter website, email me, I'll be your friend. You know, there, there, are, there are groups like Show Race and the Red Card, like I say, the, 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 the trade union movement, there are loads of people in this city who care about, who care about you and how you feel. And you are not alone. You know, you might seem like that, but you're not alone and you will get through it, you know, you will get through it. I know it's, it's, it's easy for me to say you will get through it, you know, but uh, you will, you will, you know, you haven't got to back down and, and, and rely on your friends and believe in yourself, I suppose, believe in yourself, you know, that there's, if someone says, oh, you know, you're black, you're Asian, you don't belong, of course you belong. You belong, right, you, be, you belong more than anyone, we're all citizens of the planet, you know, just because you live in a country that has a, where some people have a messed up idea based on generations of colonialism. That doesn't mean it's the whole country. There's a lot of people in this country who understand and who see, you know, it's just that you hear from that vocal minority of, of racists and right wingers, you know. There's a lot of us who are just ordinary working people from families who appreciate humanity. So you are not alone. That's what I would say.